Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some more of the stocks that were in play today. Okay, yeah, let's let's take a look at OSTK. Really sweet uh, follow through here. Congrats everybody. Uh, the, the, the calls uh, were up huge, you know, very nice uh, percentage gains for the options traders. Congrats. Um, this was good follow through, nice bounce off the middle Bollinger Band. Notice how our RSI is at 62. So there's still room to run until that 70 over bot level. No, nowhere near, uh, you know, running out of juice. This thing is just getting going, it looks like. Uh, you've got uh, Fasto hitting 79 above 80, and it gets back above the power zone. It can really get cruising. What you're looking for now is a break above 64. That is really the big level to break. You know, there's going to be resistance here. There's going to be some resistance with this closing price. Um, but but the, the, the big level to break is going to be that 64 high close resistance level. Notice how it closed close today right where this doji had formed uh, on the the uh what, what is that the, the 22nd and, and, and so the 22nd of november and so if we can break above that the, the, then the, the closing price the the following day will, will be the key level to break the, the closing price on the 23rd and if it can get above that then that'll signal it wants to head higher if it comes up to 64 and then it fails to break that level it could double top and then pull back and test that middle bollinger band again notice how it bounced right off of that 52 level as long as the middle Bollinger Band, that dot of purple line is holding, the uptrend is intact. So very nice move here. Notice the bullish crossover on MACD on the 12, 26, and 9 just started today. And there was an 8, 13, and 5 bullish crossover. Th these are simulating the possible start of a new push higher. It's just all about breaking 64. The same thing with this parabolic SAR bullish flip. Okay, take a look at GROW. Um, yeah, this is another uh, stock that, that has a nice uptrend going. It, it, it's just, for, you know, it's, it's hitting that double top level. It was up another six percent today once again it's at 64 on our site it has it has room to run it's not overbought look how this is ran, you know has run up into the 80s before so uh it, it fast though at 74 or 54 it has a lot of room until that 80 overbought level you know this could push higher it's all about breaking this closing price on the 11th that's the big level to break it's at about uh 530 535 uh right here this uh red line represents the key level once it can break above that then you have this uh, $6 level on deck, and, and then, um, or, or what is that, 575 uh, or uh, 580 and, and then, uh, yeah, if it can break above the 580 then you're looking at a $7 again. Okay, so this has come down, like I was talking about on the, the overstock chart, you know, it topped, it came down, bounced off of support down here at 340 and, and, and then it's come back up, and it hit the previous resistance level, and, and so, you know, now there's this uh, double top. I know that's a lot of uh, circles there. Let's clean it up a little bit for you. Um, and, and, and so, so, so it has a, a, essentially a double top has formed between uh, these two. Uh, you know, a top here pulled down, bottomed came back up double top so it has to break a top of this level then get back above this level break above 540 that signals it wants to head higher and then seven will be on deck if it fails to break 540 then it could consolidate and you could see a drop down to test that middle bollinger band again which is down there at four dollars okay let's look at wac the stock is heating up. It has RSI at 63, so there is room to run until that 70 overbought level. Um, so it's been uh, in a nice uptrend once once again. Just keep in mind the trend is your friend. You know when, when WAC was over here and it and it topped out last time back in uh, September and it broke below the middle Bollinger Band in October. And it had the nasty downtrend. You know you didn't want to be long, but now it has a nice uptrend going. And so as long as it can keep that going, you know the signal. You know this is a this is got got a good uh, a trading chart here and, and so it broke above the 50 and uh, 100 day simple moving averages currently down here lined up with the middle Bollinger Band between 46 and 50 so it needs to hold that 50 level and, and then right now it's been holding EMA 4 at 65 that's the pink line as long as it stays above that the chart's super bullish it's hitting the key resistance zone it needs to break above 70 cents if it can break above 70 then we're looking for a run up to the 200 day simple moving average at 89 
If it fails a break above 70 and it drops below 65, that could be the signal that it's going to consolidate. Notice that it's uh, lining up with the high close here. It's lined up with the upper Bollinger Band, so 73. So 70, 73, break above those two levels, and 87 should be on deck. Okay, take a look at ZX. This is one of those China stocks. Had, had really low volume today. Okay, so this will be a good play if volume picks up. Just keep an eye on it. Volume might come into it. Just giving it a little alert out here. Uh, RSI did break above 50. 50. Last time it did that, that's when it ran last time. And, and so you want to see Fasto get above 50. Uh, you want to see ADX here. You want to see the plus DI cross ADX to the upside. And so after it had the last big run, you know, no, notice how it was super low volume. They, they got it going quietly. Notice how the three candles were real quiet. And then boom, you had the big volume spike. The run from, uh, you know, it ran up like 200% and then pulled back. And then, and then it's just been in a downtrend ever since. It just got faded after that big thing and so now it looks like maybe it it, it it wants to bounce here so so it had the nice bounce today on really light volume remember last time it got going on light volume and so what what triggered the the, the breakout last time it was the close above the dotted purple line the middle bollinger band back here on the 10th uh, of november and then and then it broke out higher and, and so this is kind of similar to the candle on the 8th you know it's it's heating up it's heating up now if it can get above 150 above the middle Bollinger Band here at 149, that's going to signal that it's in play. You know, that's what you want to see tomorrow. And then really, if it gets above the 200-day simple moving average at 156, it's on. If it can stay above that level, then you could see a run back up to the upper Bollinger Band at 180 and potentially run back up to $2 where the previous high close was at. Okay, so so it has a lot of work to do, though, to, to make this happen. It closed today above EMAs 4, 8, and 13 and the 50-day simple moving average. Notice how it closed right below below the blue and the gold line that's the 100 and 300 day simple moving average if it can bust above you know these three resistance zones here and get above 156 it could fall through so keep an eye on a bullish volume spike and a breakthrough resistance okay let's look at cpah okay so talking about thinly traded stocks Okay, this is the perfect example. Okay, so if you're, you know, these stocks are great if you're if you're day trading. Okay, so like if, if you're in the morning and they're like, yeah, CPH has the the news and and yeah, it's in play and it's got the volume. The first thing you want to do is look at average daily volume. Okay, so look at the prior months. Look at the volume. Nothing. Nothing. Zero, zero, zero. You know what that means? If you're holding after this volume dries up, you're going to get stuck holding the bag. You know, you're going to have a hard time selling. And so so it's a game of hot potato. You know, it's it's the greater fool theory. You know, you're jumping in when, you, when you're playing that momentum in the morning, hoping that people are going to, you know, pay more. And, and then once you start seeing the climax spike and the long upper wick form, that's your signal to get out of dodge. You want to be out while people are still buying on this type of trade. Okay, so this is not an investment. This is just a trade, all right? This is a very, very, very risky trade. That's why they call them pump and dumps, because they pump it up and then they dump. And that's exactly what happened on this long upper wick. This hit 680 and it closed at 350. That longer upper wick signals that the company used the run to dump a whole bunch of shares, okay? And so basically now what you have is a close above the upper Bollinger Band. The 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 upper Bollinger Band at $3, okay? So, so if it busts back into that level, um, notice how that was the top of the previous channel, okay? So, so $3 is going to be the big support level to hold. And if it fails to get above $3, it'll be back. If, you know, if it drops back below $3, it will be back in the previous channel. And then EMA4 at $270 will be the next support level. Okay, If it stays above EMA4 and above all these moving averages down there, it could get a new uptrend going. You know, maybe it's going to start a new uptrend. This could be the, the brand new thing, and it's going to get more volume. We'll, we'll see what happens. If it stays above 3 th then it could push higher. If it drops below 3 that's going to be your red flag that it's breaking down. Down. Um, it, you know, it did have the bullish crossovers on MACD and it had the, the PSAR, but but this is all about that that low volume. And, and then what I really wanted to show you was accumulation distribution and, and, and shaken money flow. And look at this uh, big spike down uh, on accumulation distribution. I mean, today the, the, the share price closed up, you know, 62%. You would think with the, with the huge, uh, you know, close that, that, that accumulation was soaring. 
but actually it had the giant spike down, and that's a big red flag. Notice how it was completely flatlined, big spike. It fell off a cliff today. They dumped shares. Same thing with, with the spike down on CMF. You would expect with a gain of 62% uh, that there would be a, a green histogram bar, but instead it spiked down. So those are red flags. And then if you look at the 15-minute chart here, once again, look, there's no volume before, major red flag, and then volume came in. So that's cool. You know, now there's some volume, but notice how it dried up into the day. You had the big climax spike. You had the big pullback from high of day, the big volume spike. The candles worked back into the bands. And then once middle Bollinger Band broke here at $4, that was a major red flag. You know, it was already a red flag with the climax spike. This should have told you to lock in gains if you were trading. And then if you missed that, it was the break below EMAs 4 and 8. And then if you missed that, it was the break below the middle Bollinger Band. And now it, it, it's all about this the, down here at the 50 simple moving average at 323. It needs to bounce off that level. Level. If it can get back above the middle Bollinger Band at 409, then, then it'll still be in play. Okay. If it, if it fails to get above 409, if it fails to get back above 4, then, then that's going to signal downside risk. If it drops below 323, that's going to signal more consolidation. Okay. So so you know the the uh, keep, keep an eye on uh, silver and gold. So they had a nice bounce today. We did post some uh, silver charts in the chat. I recommend you go in and check them that out in the premium chat. But but the uh, yeah yeah the uh, silver you know made a nice bounce you know bitcoin was cooling down so so with with everybody you know dumping gold and silver uh you know and jumping into all the cryptocurrencies maybe if bitcoin cools down Bit gold and silver can rally who knows um so today it got a little bounce here for plg and, and, and you, as you can see it's been on this really nasty downtrend as as bitcoin's cruising higher this thing's been getting punished and, 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 and look today there was a nice close above the emas four and eight now currently ema 13 at 0 0.326 is the key level to break. If it can get above that level, that's right where it closed at, then you're looking at the middle balloon demand at 345. Notice how it tried to get back above that level before. It failed to do so. If it get back above that, then it could eventually work its way back up to the 50-day simple moving average. The, the, the similar move to here. This is what we're looking for. See, it, it took a little while to get above EMA 13, but once it got above the middle Bollinger band back here in October, it finally ran up to the 50-day simple moving average. You know, those were some nice percentage gains in, in between 40 and 54. So keep an eye that you could possibly see a run up to 39 if it could bust through resistance. And then another gold stock to look at, GSS. You can see here how it, it, it you know, it's been, you know, had this nice uptrend going. It pulled back, you know, it broke the middle Bollinger Band. It came down. It had a nice bounce off this uh, 100 and 300 day simple moving average support level down here around 77 cents. And, and so it got back above the 50 day simple moving average at 80 cents today and above EMAs 4, 8, and 13. So this is a really bullish move. And so tomorrow, if you see it break above 84, above the dotted purple line, that could signal that it wants to uh, get, get that uptrend going again. And then we'll be looking for a move back up to 90 cents and, and a break above this uh, potential break above the high close resistance level. And then another one to look at is FAGI. You know, we've been showing this one a little bit, one of the uh, blockchain stocks. And then, uh, yeah, if you look down here, you could see here it's got the, uh, or, or what was this? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyways, um, uh, <laughs> I think this is an MJ stock. Anyways, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's a penny stock. It's uh, down here and um, I, I, <laughs> it's down here and bouncing. And now it's above uh, EMAs four and eight. And, and so what it needs to do is it needs to get above forty. Oh my goodness! And uh, if it can get above forty, th then you're looking at a potential run up here to the two hundred days simple moving average at, at zero point six five four. So break forty and, and, and sixty five cents is on deck. If it fails to break forty, then then that could signal a top here. Notice how it's double topped at forty. You know, bust through forty, it's run into sixty five. Fail, you know, drop below you know thirty cents here, and it could pull down and test that middle Bollinger Band at fifteen cents. And then finally, keep an eye on. CBRIQ. The stock used to be a big board stock and it dropped down to the OTC. Today it had a bullish close above the 50 day simple moving average at 0 0.007. If it can stay, you know, it was on light volume, but if it can stay above that level, it, it could get going. So, you know, this is the best close for this stock um, in, in, in months. And so, uh, yeah, we figured we'd, we'd show this to you. Maybe it'll get going. If it drops below 007, it will no longer be in play. But yeah, the big winner. 
winner is OSTK calls. You know, that the options are where the big money's at. And this thing delivered some huge percentage gains today. Congrats, everybody. Um, yeah, check us out on our uh, stock chat. And uh, I'll post the link uh, below the video. Thank you.